Breaking news. Breaking news, y'all. I have just unlocked a new level of myself with this bomb the install and thankfully I recorded the whole process for you babes to be a part of so I have really created your own personal handbook a exclusive handbook if you will to achieving the perfect melt so go ahead download this video screen record write down notes whatever needs to be done for you to collect all the gems that this tutorial has to offer so with that being said are you babes ready okay let's get started Today's video is all about getting you, getting us, the perfect melt. I really just accepted and love the fact that my channel is like a one-stop beauty shop. Like, you know, if you want a wig tutorial, writing tutorials, makeup tutorials, anything. And today I'm adding yet another wig tutorial to the mix. To get started, we're working with some hair from Wiggins Hair Company. I've worked with their hair before and you guys have seen it so many times and in so many pictures and videos like this one, this one again, this one, this one. Like at this point, y'all get the gist. But I picked their hair in particular because it's so easy to work with the way their cap is customized especially if you want like a super flat look I wear a small in their cap because I just really love that flat look and it still fits very snug as well also their hairline doesn't have like the super protruded widow's peak hairline so I don't have to like take out hair in the front like you guys have been seeing me do a lot of lately and you know that comes in clutch for a lot of people with widow's peaks but I don't have one so I don't need that so you know but the hair I'm working with is their straight 13 by 6 HD lace frontal wig in 200% density and it is in 24 luscious inches. This hair came in a natural black color, but if you've been paying attention, I've just really loved highlights lately. And this time around, I just wanted to try something that was like really subtle and cute. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm just prepping or more so tinting the lace to the shade that is going to be more suitable for my skin tone. I just take a foundation cream and I just spread it all over until I'm like completely satisfied with the way it looks, both on the outside and the inside as well. I'm not a big fan of their like extremely small parting spaces on the sides because it just kind of defeats the purpose of a 13 by 6 lace in my opinion like if I'm not able to do a side part then what's the actual point you know what I mean but I mean I guess today it's not really that big of a deal since the style that I'll be doing is center parted but once all of that lace is covered up I'm sealing it all in with the got to be freeze blast spray on both sides of the frontal and then I'm just waiting for about five minutes for that to completely dry down and I basically just do this so that that makeup does not transfer over to anything else you know so so now that that's done this next step is extremely mandatory all you want to do is just give your wig a little massage you know so that she can know exactly what vibe we're on today you feel me like there's no time for her to be doing smash mess for us today before plucking I'm hot combing all of that hair backwards I just have to be able to completely see what I'm doing and how it's going to look so I don't end up plucking off way too much hair or like creating a bald spot or anything like that this right here is exactly how it should look and I won't go too in-depth with the plucking process also I feel like at the end of the day plucking is really just one of those things that you pick up on visually but basically I'm just moving sporadically along the hairline I'm plucking random spots at a time meaning I am not staying in one singular spot for too long and I just keep doing that until I start to see a difference in the fullness and from there you'll be able to see what parts need to be plucked a little bit more and what spots you should just completely leave alone so that you don't make the mistake of making it too scanty or too thin or anything like that but as you can see with such small lace space on the sides um, there was wasn't really much for me to do like there wasn't much I could do and during the entire plucking process I left the entire middle section alone I don't know about you guys but I really love to have a clean middle part so I just don't want any of my plucking to disrupt that section um I just took the wig off of the canvas head and I created the middle part exactly where I wanted it while it was on my head and then once it's back on the canvas head I finished up the entire plucking process to clean up that middle parting because this is really important firstly a hot comb is going to be your best friend okay you're going to to press that baby right down so you can see exactly what you're working with and with a really really tiny rat tail comb I'm following that parting all the way to the back by just following those grid lines that are on the lace 
and with my tweezers once I've cleaned up that parting I'm plucking that same grid line all the way to the back and as you can see I chose the 13 by 6 for a reason because for this style I feel like the look of a sleek middle part on a 13 by 6 or even a 6 by 6 closure is just just kissable okay but just go ahead and finalize and clean that up with a hot comb and just look at how gorgeous that baby is I couldn't wait to see it straighten so that's exactly what we're going to get into to start I'm coating the hair in some serum that will make your hair obey your every command when it comes to styling you know it'll just add some sheen some flow some sleekness and hopefully help with those flyaways basically all the things I'm looking for when I'm going for a silky straight hair look and I started trying out this chi silk serum but honestly I would recommend the bio silk serum over this one I'm just waiting for this to finish to go ahead and buy that one but the flat iron I'm using is like the con air infinity pro rainbow girl something it'll be down below for you guys to check out and I'm just making sure that I'm using the chasing method with a rat tail comb to fully achieve that bone straight look that we're going for the highlights were looking so good just exactly the way I wanted it basically subtle like it's there but it's not shouting at your face type of highlights you know what I mean but now that I've walked you through the entire prepping stage I can finally show you guys the install process So we're starting from scratch, okay, in my good old sleeping bonnet, and y'all know I don't discriminate. Like the bonnet is cute, but I can't put her in a side part, I can't put her in a ponytail, it, it's just not giving. I'd much rather have on a really nice highlighted straight wig to give the vibes and looks that I'm going for. And as you can see, I am super excited for the melt factor that this wig is about to give. For the install, I took out all of the combs on the inside aside from the one at the very bottom so that I can easily just tuck that one under my cornrows. And in this video, I really wanted to focus on the bald cap method to help you guys find the perfect cap for a really good melt, especially for your own skin tone. So with that being said, I have all of these goodies right here. And to find the perfect one, let's just go ahead and take this bonnet off. Trust me, I wanted to come straight in with the bald cap already done to avoid showing you guys my cornrows and everything, but come on, like, I can't do y'all like that, okay? I'd really love to show you the process, and I don't want cornrows look better than what some of y'all are carrying under that wig. So let's not even, let's go ahead and make this a judgment free zone okay to start i see a lot of my brown skin and chocolate babes using this cap which is basically the lightest one available as a stocking cap and i always just get so baffled like i mean it's not like you can't still achieve a really good melt with this but the process is just a little bit longer with trying to blend it all in and all of that so like why even bother you know to me there's no point so let's just go ahead and take this right off and find something of my complexion i'm trying out this darkest one first and okay from afar it looks like it could work but it's too dark for my skin tone to even give that scalp factor that we want i mean it's not bad but no i'm gonna try one of the ones on the bottom for a closer complexion match and this one is cool i could work with it a lot easier as far as blending it out into my skin tone with some foundation cream and this could definitely work but you know what could work a lot better some knee high pantyhose socks and girl let me tell you why so with stocking caps you ever notice how easily a small tiny hole can turn into like this huge gaping hole with how flimsy the material is now with some knee high socks they are so sturdy yet very stretchy at the same same time and on top of that they get extremely thin which can make it blend in more seamlessly also there's a wider range of complexions to choose from when it comes to pantyhose and just look at how easily that blends in when I put some foundation on it but girl now that we've selected a winner let's go ahead and get these edges prepped I'm starting with my got to be gel to get those edges in check and I'm just brushing in a very very generous amount into those edges to get them as flat and as sleek as possible and with my blow dryer on a cool setting I'm just drying it right up I really like to focus that gel in on my side pieces especially because that's where you'll most likely have the toughest time with trying to lay that lace down so just having a solid and flat foundation will really take your install to the next level once she's flat and completely dried we can now put that cap back on you want the part where your lace is going to be to be really flat and really thin so pull forward as much as possible and then also pull that tail as far back as possible to get it super thin in the front with how strong these socks are it'll definitely stay put and in place the entire time as opposed to if you are using like a stocking cap I'm using both of these sprays now I promise you you'll be fine if you just use the yellow one I spray the first layer on using only small amounts at a time so that I'm fully in control of where that spray goes and if you forget to cut your ear out of the cap like I did it's super important to do 
so now so that that cap can lay super flatly by your ears and if you aren't loving the idea of this sock yet then maybe this will make you love it even more but the fact that when I cut a hole into that stocking cap it stayed very small and secure unlike a bald cap would I don't know about you guys but every time I use a bald cap as soon as I cut like even the tiniest of holes it starts turning into like this really big hole and yeah it's just really hard to control it's like look at how secure it is by my ear so I'm going to finish spraying that layer down and then I blow dry it on a cool setting second layer is going right on and I'm making sure I spray a very good amount by my ear so that that area can be in place when I cut that cap off blow dry that layer up again and I spray the third layer down of course you don't have to switch up the spray like I did it's it's not necessary but I'm just going to blow dry that again until it is dry to the touch and just to give that a little bit more time to dry before I go ahead and cut the excess cap off I'm gonna secure the back end of that cap using a needle and a thread so that it is fully secure just as the front is and I'm not doing anything too fancy you know just some bootleg stitches or whatever um, they don't have to look pretty or anything like nobody's gonna see it I promise you so I'm also making sure that I sew down that tail of the cap and as you'll see later on once I secure that stitching we can cut the extra tail right off but using these fake medical scissors from Amazon very small and precise I'm going to start cutting the excess cap off and if you're using like kitty scissors or a pair that aren't really that sharp I really won't know what to tell you other than good luck but I mean just make the job easier with a pair like these and just make sure that you're cutting as close as possible and in this step you can cut the tail end of that sock right off so this is what my cap looks like it's really not bad and you can go ahead and move right into laying that wig down but I told you guys that I love a really good melt so these pieces in the front I'm just gonna make sure that they're even flatter by using my bolt hole glue so that it is much more seamless and you can barely even see the line of demarcation from my skin and the cap I'm just using very small amounts at a time and I'm tacking those front pieces in as you can see and this is looking so much better now that that's done with this Ruby Kisses foundation cream I'm gonna go ahead and buff all of that foundation in into the cap and that'll just help the cap melt even more and if I do say so myself this cap is impeccable it's looking like a fresh shave and giving very much scalp I just love it and I'm proud of myself because it's been a minute since I did this and it turned out so well and honestly it didn't even take that much time at all and I feel like that was also because I wasn't finding the ball cap to lay flatly like I would have if I was using the stocking cap but ah! okay I'm excited to finish this install right up I'm gonna give the wig a try just to make sure that that bald cap is sitting at a very good place as far as the hairline goes and also just to make sure that I don't have to make any more tweaks to the bald cap like even the hairline itself was giving silk press and we haven't even laid that baby down so realistically when you're doing an install you probably won't have any makeup on in fact I even encourage not having makeup on so that you know you can just have a blank canvas to work with also so that you can get that bald cap to match to your skin and not the makeup but of course for presentation purposes I just had to give y'all a look with this beat okay I'm wiping the makeup off along the hairline with some wipes and a very necessary step is to clean up your skin with some alcohol to remove any oils and dirt and if you have sensitive skin I would highly recommend not to use an alcohol that has a super high percentage and also once you've cleaned up your skin just give her some time to dry and then go ahead and place that wig right back on for the last and final time so if you find it ridiculous spending 200 250 dollars for an install every month then I hope that you've been paying very close attention throughout this video but to start this melting process I need to cut those extra pieces by my ears off I'm parting with a comb right where my ear is and I'm cutting off the extra pieces with a pair of scissors and as you can see those ear pieces just lay flatly on my skin now and they're looking really really good but I went ahead and did the exact same thing to the other sides and finally this wig is ready to be glued down this foundation cream again I promise y'all she's been coming in so clutch the entire video but I'm going in with a tiny mix of both shades but more of the one that is close to my skin color and I'm just making small little dots along the hairline so I like to map it out with a shade that is super close to my skin color so that it can easily blend in or blend off I did mix it with the other shades so that it's still a little bit visible so that I can see exactly where it's at I really hope that makes sense but and I don't make a whole outline of the frontal or anything like that because I just find that a bit excessive um, I just more so focus like on the dip and turns of the frontal and I promise as long as it looks like this you're going to be perfectly fine I'm going in using my Erica J lace glue for this install process and I'm using the bottom end of my brow razor to apply that glue on it just works perfectly fine for me I'm gonna be applying three layers in total and waiting in between for each layer to dry completely clear until we proceed with the next basically like this and that was layer one now let's move into layer two I'm making about like a one inch spread from the front to the back and I'm just making sure that I'm getting the glue both 
smooth on the cap as well as my skin and let's just talk about how lovely that bald cap melt is looking look i wasn't lying when i told y'all i got y'all with this tutorial i'm applying the third and final layer now and just make sure you're focusing that glue by your ears as well like the ear tabs trust me the ear tabs are always doing the most so it's important to have enough glue there to support you as you can see the third layer is signed sealed and delit <laughs> let me shut up but you can now finally slide that frontal forward and place it down strategically. Emphasis on strategically. Just make sure that you're not placing it behind the glue because trust me, it's not a good look. I did that on this side and I think it's because I was filming with a really small mirror. If I also have done this in my bathroom, I definitely would have caught on to it a lot sooner and fixed it before I combed that lace in. But you know, it's okay, no biggie. We can't be perfect all the time, you know? Just make sure you don't make the same mistake I did and just be sure to bring that hairline all the way forward. I definitely did a lot better on this side and when I was done with combing it all and using a comb, I'm going to take my elastic band and just tie that down, focusing the elastic band right on the hairline where the glue is. I kept that elastic band on for about 10 minutes, you know, pretended to chill on my phone for some visual representation. And once that 10 minutes was up, or maybe even longer, you know, just as soon as you hear that first heartbeat in your brain, I promise you, that's like the indication to take that elastic band off because I really don't be keeping track of the time. But once it's ready, it's time to take that band off and start cutting the excess lace off. So I'm using the brow raise to cut off the lace and you can see a little bit better what I was talking about with my mess up like trust me it's, it's just not a cute look like it's not a cute look at all but in person it looked so much better trust me once all of that extra lace is off it's not looking too bad okay to further blend all of that lace in just take your foundation and buff that into the lace and please make sure that your foundation is the correct match okay don't don't mess yourself up not too much of the foundation so it doesn't congest the lace you definitely want to add a little bit more than I did at this point I was just in a rush because the sun was getting ready to set but look at the blend though like silk press vibes with the no edges look like it's giving very much scalp no filter and you guys know that I typically love a really good baby hairs moment but this had me second guessing I don't know like with how much I was loving this no edges look I don't know like I really don't know I debated for so long again and again trying to figure out if I wanted to do baby hairs or leave it alone really didn't know what I wanted to do but again with the sun getting ready to set I just decided to leave it as is like you know i mean it's cute and one thing about recording on a camera you just never know what you're gonna get until you're editing but in person and up close trust me the lace did not look as pale as it was giving off on here but i ended up going out that night to take pictures so i was able to show you guys what it looked like in a different lighting and as you can see everything is pretty seamless and no i didn't do anything extra to it this is exactly how i left it very well blended in the skin tone match was amazing and on point i was so obsessed and i really wish i would have gotten to show you guys the baby hairs process i'll be sure to include that in a different video for you all but yeah the highlights look amazing the melt is on point the middle part is giving okay no flitter on the hairline like you guys see the material but with that being said that concludes today's video and this exclusive handbook the perfect melt edition i hope you babes enjoyed this tutorial share some of these tips with your favorite people and be sure to stick around to see what's coming next